How do flying fish look? How true are the rumors about the Asiatic catfish hunting for people? What's a salmon czar capable of? You'll learn that. Smart Pizza's with you. And in this episode, you'll see the most unusual catches of fishermen. Orca. And we'll start with this unusual photo taken by fishermen. If you believe the story, people managed to catch a real mutant orca. It was of a standard size, but along with it, the animal had two mouths. How did this happen? And what does it use them for? Scientists find it difficult to answer this question because immediately after demonstrating the catch to the public, the animal was released back into the natural environment and never seen again. Flying or swimming? The fish in the following story fits just one of these two definitions, and as we get trained to know it, we'll have to make our choice. So here we have a flying fish that a trained fisherman has managed to catch. From the outside, it may seem that this is quite an ordinary occupation, not much different from catching crucian carps and pikes, but in fact, there are a lot of nuances. So flying fish grow up to 20 inches in length and can weigh not more than a couple pounds. They live in small flocks, hunting plankton and other small animals. Although, who am I kidding? That's not why we're here. Let's find out exactly what makes these fish fly. There's a reason they're called that, right? Turns out as evolution progressed, our underwater creatures grew wings on both their pectoral and pelvic fins. And now they use both tools at once to easily evade even stronger and potentially faster fish. The fin wings are pressed against the body during swimming, and the fish in flight can develop a speed of up to 50 miles an hour. This is achieved through tail fin swings up to 70 times per second. So at the moment of danger, they jump out of the water at an angle of 30 to 45 degrees to the surface, spread their wings, and soar over the sea surface, giving aquatic predators their walking orders. The main thing in this case is not to overdo, because flying over the water they're exposed to other predators, this time feathered ones. When the flying fish realizes that its strength is running out, it descends and touches the water with its tail and starts to accelerate. With this method, this creature can fly up to 2,000 feet over water. It's a pity that these fighter fish haven't learned to hide from humans. They're regularly caught for their tasty meat. But there are more unusual cases in nature where people find unique fish. So unique that it's even scary to catch them. There's no telling what they're capable of. Such was this shark caught in the Gulf of California in 2011. It turned out that it had congenital malformations of the skeleton or internal organs. Despite that, the poor creature managed to get pregnant, and the fish had perfectly normal offspring. But no, one of the eight sharks stood out from the crowd. One of them was the smallest with just one eye. This shark acquired Vogue and made scientists from all over the world curious. In addition to being a cyclops, it also had a deformed tail that was bent on the right side and prevented it from moving quickly and sharply. The fish was also albino. This is why it would be easy to spot in wild waters. After making the decision that this shark was not ready for independent life, the specialist took it with them and released into the wild the rest of the fish. Do you think they did the right thing? Or even though it was mutated, should the creature have been released with its relatives? So now I'm going to tell you about another shark caught by a man, but this one is different from those you're used to. From early years, we were assured that sharks live only in the seas and oceans, but it turns out there are exceptions to the rules, and one of them is the spear tooth shark. It's believed that it can be found exclusively in fast-moving turbid waters more precisely in rivers from India to Australia. In order for the creature to move from salt to fresh water, it's important for it to get a number of changes in its body structure. For example, to acquire an enlarged liver or pump the gills so that they can absorb dissolved sodium and chlorine in the water. But such adaptations are known only in less studied species. So no one knows how the spear-toothed shark adapted to fresh water. No one knows. 
At first inspection, it seems that this shark is not remarkable at all, that it's exactly the same as all the others. Great color, short and wide muzzle, small eyes. But if you look closely, you'll notice that, for example, its second dorsal fin is larger than that of its marine relatives. And the teeth on both jaws are different. On the upper jaw, they're triangular, serrated, typical of many sharks. But the teeth on the lower jaw have an elongated shape and resemble arrowheads. Researchers believe that this is necessary to hold in the teeth more agile and slippery prey. Sharks grow up to about 8 to 10 feet in length. Having not the greatest dimensions, these sharks can move along the current, both literally and figuratively, hoping that the tide will help in the hunt. And if neither is present, the spear-toothed shark relies on Ampuli lorenzini. This shark can detect electric fields and their fluctuations, and even in the murkiest waters, it has no trouble finding something to eat. Okay, a shark, no matter how strange it is, will not surprise many people, but the fish from the following story will do it easily. A man from Venezuela went fishing to catch a perch. He felt the end of the line getting noticeably heavier and stood up at the ready. The man rather quickly lifted the catch to the surface of the water and couldn't believe his eyes. It was not a perch and not someone he knew. It was a rather rare porcupine fish. According to the fisherman's words, pulling it on land for the first time, he thought he'd caught some kind of dinosaur. The creature's head was completely covered with spikes, and its scales were so dense that they resembled chain mail. But it's exactly the color of the fish that was most unusual. Catfish are black or dark gray in color. However, this one was light with pinkness. The man probably caught an albino. What would you do with a catch like that? Take a couple pictures and release it back into the wild? Would you sell it? Or would you take it with you as a souvenir? Write in the comments. Ugly hagfish. Okay, fair warning. If any of you are eating right now, you better put your food aside for at least a couple of minutes. Because this creature, caught by fishermen, is about as disgusting as possible. We're looking at a hagfish, one of the most primitive and modern crania. They are, by the way, the only creatures in the world that have a skull but no spine. Also, they do have rudimentary vertebrae. They live in the waters of the world ocean, in the tropical and subtropical zone, usually at a depth of 320 to 1600 feet. In length, they reach 28 inches, and their entire body is incredibly slippery because of the mucus released by them. Anyway, that's not all the peculiarities of the hagfish. It has light-sensitive cells on its head as compensation for vision lost during evolution. They can also sneeze. And yes, it's when a hagfish sneezes that excess mucus comes out. And it's not possible to wash it off with water because Mother Nature tried to add mucin and keratin to its composition, making the mucus hard and dense. And even if the fisherman is very angry at the hagfish for ruining his boat, he'll not be able to break its heart with such cries. At least because this creature has four hearts at once, the main heart and three additional hearts. These nasty creatures feed on dead fish, that is, they're carrion eaters. The hagfish find a suitable body, enter it through the mouth or gills, and then eat from the inside. Not a pleasant fact. But they've adapted to this through evolution and survive perfectly well thanks to this kind of hunting. In any case, it's much easier than attacking still alive and fast fish. Wolf Eel Look, when I first saw this fish caught, I remembered the Dementors from Harry Potter for some reason. They had no distinct body, and their jaws were wide open and terrifying. Fortunately, the Wolf Eel couldn't suck out souls. It grows up to 8 feet, dwelling in the northern basin of the Pacific Ocean in the Sea of Okhotsk. Sea of Japan, and Bering Sea. Completely disregarding socializing with relatives, it spends most of all of its life in complete solitude, sheltered in a burrow. Better to be a hermit than to listen to a thousand and one jokes about your ridiculous appearance, wouldn't you agree? And it'd be wrong to say that its parents are to blame. You see, they didn't try, didn't care about the eel, and that's why it turned out like this. In fact, it was exactly the opposite. 
These fish are monogamous, that is, they remain faithful to their only partner. In this case, they even see each other not too often, of course, but still regularly to do it during the breeding season. At the same time, up to 10,000 eggs appear in the family nest. Both parents carefully monitor the clutch and leave their bunker only to eat. To help the younger generation live well, mom and dad even ventilate the area around with their fins. And this courtship can last up to four months. Now I have only one question. Why is this fish so angry at the whole world? Eh, if only the wolf eel could speak a language we can understand and explain its true desires and preferences. That'd be really hmm. cool. But wait, I think I found our potential translator. It's a fish with a human face that was found in China. It was first seen by some tourists. The girl thought it was a diver who was sick, but when the fish showed its body, everything immediately fell into place. The girl immediately took out her phone and started filming the unusual creature. Turned out to be a huge fish, and the closer it swam to the shore, the more clearly were the outlines of a human face and the light spots on its head. Surprisingly, regardless of the angle, the dark marks on its head formed human eyes, nose, and mouth. And the light spots looked like protruding eyebrows and cheekbones. What kind of fish do you think it was, and why did it have such a strange face? Was it a mutation, or just a normal trick of the eye? I look forward to your opinions in the comments. Observer You know, when I look at the creatures that are found underwater, I realize that there's a lot of them out there. You can meet a mutant with incredible features, and even an unknown creature like this one. It was filmed in Florida, and people couldn't even guess who it had been for a long time. One of the main versions that emerged over time is that it's a sheep's head, a fish with human teeth. Usually it doesn't exceed 20 inches in length and weighs no more than 22 pounds. And as for its teeth, well, here they are. As you can see, the front ones look like incisors, while the back ones are molars that are pushed back. Interesting fact, the first teeth begin to appear when the sheep's head is only 0.2 inches long. Nothing's known about this fish, how it got such teeth, what they're for, what this creature feeds on, and so on. That's why I fully agree with the author of this video. It's better not to swim in these waters. And the next fish to be caught is the Goonch catfish. This monster from the rivers of Asia is accused of hunting people. But is it really so? Let's find out. Let's start with the fact that encounters with this monster have been discussed for a long time. But it's only at a stretch that you can call such a meeting a great luck. After all, the meat of this fish is unpalatable, and even if the rumors are to be believed, it can be poisonous. The only purpose for catching a goonch is to win an achievement in reality or get a valuable trophy, no more than that. A huge slippery carcass, a giant head, the largest of all catfish, and a wide mouth with fangs bent inward. All this suggests that catching this fish is not as easy as you might think. In addition, he weighs up to 330 pounds, which clearly doesn't make the capture easy. But let's get back to the danger to a man. Here are people fishing them out, right? So how dangerous is that? Actually, it's a bit ambiguous. They feed on crayfish, fish, amphibians, and small mammals caught in the water. They're very fond of rotten meat and enjoy eating carrion. Note, it's because of carrion why these fish began to be considered cannibals. There were cases when these creatures ate human bodies. That's why people applied harsh epithets to them. At the same time, the fish themselves will never attack a human being. They're unlikely to defeat us, and even if they could, they'd use up a lot of energy. It's comforting to know that there have been no documented attacks. Therefore, I would be more worried about the state of this giant itself. According to official sources, it's on the verge of extinction. Chinook Salmon Let me tell you right away, this is not an ordinary salmon in front of you. It's a real giant, the largest of the Pacific salmon, a monster with an amazing appearance and no less amazing capabilities. Its name is Chinook Salmon, or as they call him, the Prince of Salmon. This big guy on average grows up to three and a half feet in length, but there are much larger individuals that weigh even more than 110 pounds. 
Outwardly, the Chinook salmon doesn't differ much from other salmonids. It's the same silver fish with black speckles on the back. However, when the spawning period comes, everything turns upside down. The prince is the prince, and the animal becomes the most brutal in its habitat. Its body darkens, reddens, and he has fangs. You can meet such a miracle of nature only in the cold seas. It's sad that ancient peoples especially valued this creature and put it even above gold. I wonder who you'd be more afraid of, that red giant with fangs, but a salmon, or this small, barely noticeable creature with obviously sharp teeth. Honestly, I'm watching this video and I don't understand if this monster can even be touched. It's kind of angry at everyone around it. Now I'll tell you about the biggest river monsters caught. The Amazon Monster Amazon indeed harbors a huge number of very different, terrible monsters. But I've never seen anything like this before in my life. Fishermen were doing their favorite thing when suddenly they hooked someone big. At first they thought it was a crocodile, but later the silhouette of a fish began to be seen from the water. People hastily exchanged glances and continued to pull the fish onto dry land. As they say, all things are difficult before they're easy. They were really surprised when they saw this fish or snake right in front of them. The creature was simply terrible. The giant teeth made it clear that it had devoured more than a thousand other river creatures. The group of fishermen didn't say what exactly it was, but judging by their photo, I'd go with the snake version. What do you think? Is this catch real? And if so, what creature did they catch? Share your thoughts in the comments. Monster Crocodile There are such spontaneous catches when you catch something you don't even know what to expect. And sometimes the catch is not only known in advance, it's the meaning of your activity. So, fishermen from Australia managed to catch a real monster crocodile, which they hunted for eight years. This 1,320-pound predator made life harder for the people and animals of Australia for about 50 years. At first, the predator simply coexisted with people and didn't show itself. But over time, it began to get brazen and get closer and closer to populated areas. And at some point, people just happened to notice a giant dark tail which went underwater right in front of them at a distance of only a few dozen feet from the house. That was the straw that broke the camel's back, and all the locals organized to catch the monster. It had been eight years since the first operation, and finally it was caught. After capture, the animal was taken to a crocodile farm where it'll have all the necessary conditions for a happy life. It'll feel good and will not interfere with others. Golden Masir Now I'm going to talk about a fish that only the most experienced fishermen in the world can catch. This is the Golden Masir, or as it's also called, the Tiger of the River. If earlier fishing was a simple hobby for you, which brings positive emotions and at the same time allows you to have a normal rest, then catching a golden masseer will change the state of things. After all, in the case of it, any fishing is nothing but a real competition with nature and a test of strength. In front of you is one of the largest fish in the rivers of the Himalayan mountain system and one of the largest fish among the entire carp family. These fish can weigh 110 pounds or more, while having a length of 10 feet. However, the golden masseer is called a tiger not because of its size and certainly not because of its color. It's all about its incredible strength of mind and body. These fish never give up without a fight, no matter how desperate the situation may be. You know, it'd be strange if it were otherwise. After all, the golden masseer lives in very difficult conditions and is adapted to something from which any other fish would instantly die. For example, these miracle creatures swim to a height of 8,200 feet upstream of the river, and they can also live both at a temperature of 55 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. The tiger of the river feeds properly, it eats everything in sight. First, it sucks it in like a vacuum cleaner and then it chews it with its special pharyngeal teeth. Okay, the next river monster is just as interesting. This is the Australian lungfish, a fish that's learned to breathe air to survive in muddy rivers. In fact, this is a fish with lungs, which shocks and admires scientists from all over the world. 
But you know, I would also learn to breathe underwater if I were on this planet for 380 million years. Yeah, that's how long the lungfish genus has been around. And getting a bit ahead of ourselves, let's get its peculiarity straight. This fish does not have lungs as such, but the Australian lungfish has a modified swim bladder. In ordinary fish, it's responsible for the position of the body in the water, and in such fish as the Australian lungfish, it's generously stuffed with blood capillaries. It's with its help that the underwater inhabitant swallows atmospheric air, and the capillaries suck oxygen into the blood. Everything works exactly the same for us. By the way, you know what else this fish has in common with us? The size. This miracle of nature can reach 5.5 feet in length and weigh about 88 pounds. With such abilities and the unusual feature, the Australian lungfish settled where it's relatively few competitors. It usually swims alone, feeds on plants, mollusks, or crustaceans, as well as about once an hour pops up to take a new breath of fresh air. That's how its 50 to 100 years of life pass slowly and confidently. Siamese Giant Carp The giant carp you see now American Paddlefish when I heard the name of this river monster, for some reason I thought of a fish that swims with its nose, like it has an oar and it paddles with it. Yeah, it's nonsense, so let's just take a look at this miracle of nature and find out what it needs this paddle for. In fact, the fish use their noses much more efficiently than that. There's a reason why it takes up a third of their total body length. This 27 and a half inch thing is necessary for American paddlefish to detect prey that is plankton. As soon as it's time for lunch, the fish rise closer to the surface with an already open mouth and pass streams of water through their gills. Such filtration allows them to quickly get rid of all the excess and at the same time keep the tasty prey in their mouth. But that's not all. It turns out that American paddlefish like to make the catch more satisfying. To do this, they begin to specially muddy the water, which causes a large number of microorganisms to rise from the muddy bottom. That's where this nose comes into play. With its help, it finds food in muddy water and eats it. Electroreceptors never fail. Everyone knows Napoleon, the former emperor of the French. Many people know his not the most impressive height. It's believed that he was less than five and a half feet tall but this did not prevent him from achieving great success. And now imagine what the Napoleon fish is capable of, the size of which is much more impressive and cause fear and shudder. The maximum length of the underwater emperor is about 7.5 feet, and its weight reaches 420 pounds. But if this is not enough for you, pay attention to the forehead of the animal. In honor of the outgrowth on its head, it was given the name of Humphead Reyes. Its forehead resembles the tricorn head of the famous military leader. I don't know about you, but I find it rather ironic that the Napoleon fish is bigger than the man it's named after. But this is no time to giggle. It's time to talk about serious things, like the menu, for example. The underwater emperor has a menu as large as the Frenchman's list of victories. This is where they can compete. Giant and incredibly powerful jaws give the fish the ability to devour anyone in seconds. Even crabs with their shells or venomous fish with a toxin defense. All of them are nothing to the underwater Napoleon. What else is amazing about this creature is its intelligence. Living at a depth of 100 feet, the sea giant is happy to communicate with people. It lets them stroke itself and also poses for the camera. I wonder if this is its plan to lull the vigilance or just uses circumstances to have a delicious and free lunch. You can expect anything from a fish like that. Squid Now, as you realize, I'm going to talk about squid. But not the ordinary one, of course, but the jumbo flying squid, also known as the Humboldt squid. It sounds very majestic and cool, as if it's some six and a half foot long deep dweller that weighs 110 pounds and always tries to find someone to eat. But wait a minute, that's exactly what it is. It's one of the largest squid species that lives all along the American Pacific coast. And that's where we, humans, are a bit unlucky. Along with its enormous size, it's also aggressive towards humans. How do you know that this dangerous creature is in front of you? Well, it's quite simple. During the hunt, Humboldt squids clearly flicker, 
quickly changing color from red to white and back. Because of this, local fishermen nicknamed them the Red Devils. By the way, in fact, this squid changes a lot more colors. It's just that the human eye doesn't see all of them. And now I'll tell you about other fish that are just as dangerous. Stay tuned to see these frightening and venomous creatures. Climbing Perch Not every fish can boast of being able to kill land creatures, but the climbing perch can. This fish is also known as a crawler fish. These creatures are quite small, up to 8 inches in length. But despite this, they are able to finish off not only water dwellers, but also dangerous land predators as snakes, birds, dogs, cats, and even crocodiles. The catch is that thanks to a special suprabranchial organ, the climbing perch can stay out of the water for several days. The fish is called a crawler in some languages for a reason. It literally crawls out of the water onto the shore where it moves quickly enough. Moving its tail, fins, and spiked gill covers, the climbing perch is able to overcome 320 feet plus in an hour, which is a very high speed for a fish. Being an aggressive and voracious creature on land, climbing perches hunt on small creatures which are clearly frightened when they see the crawling fish. But even large creatures which know about the climbing perch are afraid of it. After all, if a snake, crocodile, or a bird of prey swallow a climbing perch, the sharp needles of the fish will stick into the throat of the predator and it will die or at least be very seriously injured. This is why even land creatures are afraid of this dangerous monster. Atlantic Goliath Grouper And here is the menace of the seas. Outwardly, the Atlantic Goliath Grouper is a real aquatic monster. Its appearance is, to put it mildly, repulsive. A huge massive head, sloping forehead, large lower jaw, dark color, and elastic body resembling a spindle. This is how a fish that inspires fear in other creatures should look. This is complemented by its large size. The Atlantic Goliath grouper can grow up to 8 feet in length and its weight reaches 1,000 pounds. However, usually individuals of this species weigh between 330 to 440 pounds. But you have to admit it's not so little. The Atlantic Goliath grouper feeds on crustaceans, fish, octopus, and young sea turtles. It's believed that some Atlantic Goliath groupers are not squeamish about their congeners. In general, it's better not to mess with this terrible cannibal fish. Moreover, it can easily attack if it considers that a human poses a threat. But this only applies to the Atlantic Goliath grouper habitats. When you're on the shore or in a boat, you don't have to worry about being attacked by this big fish. The same cannot be said for the marlin. Representatives of this family of ray-finned fish are real mad and extremely dangerous creatures. First, they're very big. Representatives of some species exceed 16 feet in length and weigh more than 1,750 pounds. Secondly, marlins are very fast. In water, some develop speed of 68 miles an hour. Finally, they have a spear-like snout, which is a full-fledged spear. It's easy to cut yourself on it and it can even pierce a person, which has happened more than once. What's more frightening, marlins regularly attack ships and boats. When trying to catch them, these creatures can accelerate and fly onto the deck, hitting some fishermen. Sometimes they don't fly onto the deck, but just leave a hole in the hull. A dense and sharp spear can do it in no time. Of course, large ships are not threatened, but a marlin can sink a small fishing boat, especially inflatable one, in no time. Stonefish In contrast to marlins, which regularly rise to the surface and jump out of the water as well as dolphins, stonefish never do that. You're more likely to see them on the sea floor than at the water surface. And if you suddenly manage to distinguish this fish on the bottom along the rocks, silt, and sand, it's better to swim away from this place without touching the bottom. In that case, you may accidentally step on this dangerous and devilish creature, which has the title of the most venomous fish on the planet. The prickly rays of this fish's dorsal fin release a powerful toxin. It causes very severe pain with possible shock, paralysis, and tissue death depending on the depth of penetration. If the spine hits a large blood vessel, then death can occur in two to three hours. In general, this outcome is possible if a person will procrastinate in seeking medical attention. Normal swimming shoes will not protect against these sharp and dense spines. So even with equipment, there's no guarantee of safety. 
These fish live in the tropical and subtropical waters of the Pacific and Indian Oceans, from the Red Sea to the Great Barrier Reef, so keep that in mind. Mariana Snailfish Next up is a fish you're unlikely to see live in its habitat. It's harmless to humans, but it terrifies and frightens the deep-sea inhabitants of the world ocean. The species Pseudoliparus swearii, commonly referred to as simply swearii, or the Mariana snailfish, was discovered recently. It was only described in 2017. That's because this snailfish lives at gigantic depths of 4.3 to 4.9 miles. The fish has also been found in the Mariana Trench, the deepest place in the ocean. Swearai can withstand extremely high pressures without harming itself. In its ecological niche, the snailfish is a super predator. It mainly preys on shrimp and other arthropods. These predators have quite decent sizes from such a deep habitat. They grow up to 12 inches in length and weigh about 7 ounces. The eggs of these fish are also large and they can be about 0.3 inches in diameter. Incredible depth of habitat, considerable size, predatory nature, and creepy appearance. What else is needed to be called one of the most frightening creatures on the planet? Although Swearai does look creepy, many river creatures can give it a head start. They don't live at great depths, but that makes them even scarier because humans can easily stumble upon them. What you saw was only the beginning. The real horror is further, so get ready. Next, you'll see a creepy eel, a fish with a saw, a giant carp, and the world's most dangerous freshwater predator. It's going to be interesting. New Zealand Longfin Eel One of the creepiest eels lives in fresh waters of New Zealand. Young New Zealand longfin eels can be found in shallow waters with a muddy bottom of up to 20 inches depth. And adults can be found in dense thickets of aquatic vegetation or in crevices. New Zealand longfin eels are omnivorous and very voracious. At a young age, they feed on insect larvae and then switch to small fish with a particular preference for trout. These eels are probably safe for humans, but their appearance is still capable of frightening many people. By the way, one can only say about these creatures that they love to travel. The young eels can be found far from their native reservoirs, at a distance of about 75 miles. In addition, these creepy creatures are long livers. There's a known case when a female New Zealand longfin eel lived to an age of 106 years and weighed 53 pounds. Large Tooth Sawfish And this fish looks more respectable. It's immediately clear what the danger of this monster is. The large tooth sawfish has a long, flat outgrowth of the snout, which is framed on the sides with teeth. These teeth make the snout look like a real saw. This outgrowth may act as a real saw, so the fish can be dangerous to humans. There have been several cases of the large tooth sawfish attacking people in history. It's believed that the most dangerous large tooth sawfish live in the Gulf of Panama, where they managed to massacre several swimmers. You can encounter the large tooth sawfish not only in bays and seas, but also in rivers. The sawfish swims in freshwater rivers during its seasonal migrations, and it can be found in different places, from Africa and Vietnam to Australia and Thailand. By the way, as for Vietnam and Thailand, here you can encounter such a freshwater monster. The Siamese giant carp, also known as the giant barb, is striking for its size. The length of some individuals can reach six and a half feet, and their weight can reach up to 220 to 265 pounds. And this isn't the limit. There are reports that this fish can grow as big as 10 feet in length and weigh up to 660 pounds. Giant carps are omnivores. They eat aquatic plants, small crustaceans, phytoplankton, fruit, shrimp, and other critters that can be found. Humans are not attacked by this monster, but people themselves often arrange trips to catch a record-breaking carp. It's believed that the Siamese giant carp is one of the coolest trophies in any fisherman's collection. Tigerfish The same can be said about this fish, except that catching it is a much more difficult task. The tigerfish is a predator, and many experts call it the most dangerous freshwater predator in the world. One look at these toothy beasts is enough to agree with this statement. Tigerfish are endemic to Africa and can be found in the rivers around there. The largest fish, called Mabenga, or the Goliath tigerfish, lives in the Congo River Basin, where it attacks not only the local aquatic animals but also people. These monsters often hunt in schools. Just imagine dozens of these huge creatures with razor-sharp teeth rushing aggressively through the water and devouring everything in their path. 
Even such monsters as African crocodiles are afraid of tigerfish and try not to mess with them. That's saying a lot. In order to catch a tigerfish, sometimes you have to wait for days tracking these monsters down, but that's just where it starts. With their creepy, shark-like teeth, tigerfish easily bite the fishing line and are very reluctant to get out of the water, so fishermen will have to try hard to fish this monster out and stay unharmed at the same time. African Lungfish And finally, another creepy freshwater monster which strikes not only with its appearance but also with its incredible abilities. Do you still remember the climbing perch, the fish that even snakes are afraid of? So the African lungfish, like the climbing perch, is able to live outside the water. This fish is amphinoustic, that is, it has a double respiratory system, thanks to which the African lungfish does not suffocate while in the air. In contrast to climbing perch, which only comes ashore for a few hours, the African lungfish can live ashore for several months or, in some cases, several years. It swims out on land during the drying up of water bodies. All this time it breathes with its lungs and hibernates. As soon as the water level in a water body is normalized, the African lungfish returns to its native environment. Now I'll tell you about how people caught the biggest shark in the world. Giant Man-Eating Shark There have been a huge number of very different catches in history, but the catches associated with giant sharks attract the most attention. After all, these are incredibly dangerous predators, ready to devour everyone in a matter of seconds. One of these underwater monsters was a great white shark named Nukumi, who was caught in 2020. The length of the predator exceeded 16 feet, and the age exceeded 50 years. Of course, such a powerful and, no less importantly, experienced fish couldn't be hunted with ordinary fishing rods or simple nets. Here, people had to resort to unorthodox methods. So, large sharks are usually caught on long lines, less often harpooned, and smaller species are caught with trawls and strong nets. But before you start doing all that, you need to take some of the shark's strength away. Because it's a little unfair that it's ten times stronger and more powerful than a human, and they're trying to catch it. To do this, the vessel from which the hunt takes place is accelerated to great speed, and people throw the bait overboard. Then pig or cow's blood is poured into the water. It's known that the sharks can smell it from many miles away, so wherever it is, very soon a giant fish will be next to people. That's where the most interesting thing begins. The long exhaustion of the predator, which will do everything for several hours full of adrenaline to catch up with the prey. Well, when the target finally becomes exhausted and clearly slows down, then you can proceed in the direct hunt. The more ruthless fishermen, as I said, use a hand harpoon. Others, like the people in this story, simply lift the fish in their nets and then stow them on board for study. Megalodon is an extinct huge shark that's considered one of the largest predators in the history of Earth. The name Megalodon translates from Ancient Greek as Big Tooth, and this reflects the main characteristics of the ancient monster. Along with this, Megalodon was a giant carnivore that reached a length of about 66 feet, or perhaps even more. This far exceeds the size of modern predatory sharks. Of course, given that it was also the top predator of the food chain of the marine ecosystems of its time, its main diet was marine mammals such as whales and dolphins, as well as other large aquatic creatures. Despite this, about two to three million years ago, these fish became extinct. It remains a mystery to this day why this happened. Scientists suggest that it could be due to climate change. However, some are sure that such a majestic and independent predator couldn't die out. If it's not on the surface, it means that it's hiding somewhere in the depths, where people have not yet been. Whale Shark So while we're on the subject of record breakers in terms of size, let's take a look at the whale shark, the one that today everyone confidently calls the largest shark in the world. Its length can reach 39 feet and more. Here are some interesting facts. The whale shark has many baleen plates in its mouth, which are used to filter food. The main component of the whale shark's diet is microscopic marine organisms such as zooplankton and squid par larvae. That is, the shark doesn't rush to eat everyone and everything as Megalodon did. It's chosen a more passive lifestyle that will probably lead it to success. By the way, do you know how fast these big creatures filter small organisms? 
Using their gills, whale sharks can process over 1,585 gallons of water every hour. And here's some more statistics. Whale sharks have about 3,000 small teeth, less than one inch long, that can help them feed on small shrimp, fish, and plankton. However, these fish can neither chew nor bite, and they're completely safe for humans. Mako. Remember these four letters. If someone tells you that there are these sharks in the area where you're vacationing, it's better not to even go into the water. Don't try to catch them according to the principle that was described earlier. Well, I mean exhausting the sharks and stuff. The fact is that with a high probability, the Mako shark will simply catch up with you, even at the highest speed, take the prey and hide in the impenetrable abyss. And that's in the best case. These marine predators are, not for nothing, considered the fastest among the sharks in the modern world. This species can accelerate up to 68 miles per hour. Along with the tremendous speed, they're also insanely aggressive. Repeatedly, divers have noticed how these sharks swim towards them at high speed and deviate from the course only at the last moment. Their aggressive temperament is also evidenced by the constant wounds that fishermen find on the mako sharks caught by them. This may indicate the eternal rivalry among mako sharks and their bullying lifestyle. In general, it's better not to mess with them. After all, if this shark doesn't like someone, it will definitely not leave them alone and will not give them peace. For example, it will be ready to jump out of the water for more than 20 feet after them. In general, it will do everything to achieve its goal. The mako shark constantly maintains a high body temperature, which helps it move faster and make decisions. White sharks have a keen sense of smell, and the mako is no exception. These fish pass a stream of water through their nostrils, the receptors of which can pick up even small amounts of dissolved blood. In addition, nature has endowed them with a special organ with electroreception. Thanks to it, mako sharks are able to sense prey, their congeners, or danger at a great distance. Goblin Shark all sharks have their own special records. Some are fast, some are big, and some are just ugly, the kind that are creepy to even look at. I'm talking about the goblin shark. It lives in deep water, and rightly so. It shouldn't scare us all on the surface. The goblin shark's diet consists of deep sea squid, crabs, and fish. In total, science knows of only 45 individuals of the shark that have been caught or washed ashore. However, we do know how it hunts. Like many other sharks, the goblin shark is an active predator. It uses its elongated jaws to stick out its teeth and grab prey, which it detects using sensitive electroreceptors on its snout. Frilled Shark If you may have heard of the goblin shark, I'm sure that this is the first time many people have heard of the frilled shark. You missed a lot because it certainly has something to surprise you. The earliest fossils of the frilled shark date back to the Cretaceous period. That makes it one of the oldest creatures on the planet in general and the oldest shark in particular. You know, from the looks of it, the shark didn't even plan to evolve over such a long period of time, but that's okay. It survived many generations, so it knows a thing or two. If any of you want to look at it in person, you should know that it's quite rare and lives at a depth of up to 5,000 feet. Its body is perfectly adapted for deep diving. As we know, at such a huge depth, the lighting is so-so, to put it mildly. Therefore, in order to eat a fish and crash into some stone, the frilled shark, unlike most of its relatives, has not lost its external lateral line organ system, a sense organ that detects the slightest movement in the water. And if some other inhabitants of the depths need to be constantly in action, swimming and surfacing even for a short time, the frilled shark is an exception to the rule. Thanks to its giant liver, it can be at depth without any physical effort. In this shark, this organ is filled with low-density lipids. But that's not all. The frilled shark also has an amazing structure of its teeth. They're five-pointed, thanks to which they can turn the prey into minced meat. Literally. Eh, I wish sharks weren't so big, but still interesting to us, so we could swim with them in the sea watch them prey on fish and so on. Basically, I wish all sharks were like the spined pygmy shark. It lives in all oceans except the Arctic Ocean at a depth of 650 to 4,000 feet. It's one of the smallest sharks in the world. The largest individual, so you understand, reached only 11 inches in length. 
It's not dangerous to humans at all. All their seriousness that comes from it is the spine on the dorsal fin. In addition, for protection, Mother Nature endowed this little creature with luminous organs, which are located on its abdomen. But even a shark like this can bite. In this, it's helped by its teeth, of course. What's interesting, the teeth of the upper and lower jaws are different. The former are small and narrow, located vertically, and the latter are, on the contrary, large, wide, and blade-shaped. When they close, they create an incredible bite that allows the shark to cut the prey with its teeth like a guillotine. Despite this miniature appearance, the spined pygmy shark still finds something to eat. Its diet is based on small squid, glowing anchovies, and other small fish. And now, I'll tell you about the most dangerous creatures living under the ice of Antarctica. Leopard Seal I think absolutely everyone knows what the leopard is. This graceful cat is one of the most dangerous predators on the planet. But far fewer people know about the existence of the leopard seal. The only thing they have in common with the ordinary leopard is the name and color, because the leopard seal is a seal and not a representative of the feline family. It got its name due to its spotted skin. However, it's associated with the ordinary leopard by its predatory behavior. Perhaps it's this creature that can be called the most dangerous animal in Antarctica. The leopard seal is a large predator 10 to 13 feet long and weighing about half a ton. Due to the hefty size, as well as aggression, sharp teeth, and speed of up to 25 miles per hour, the leopard seal hardly knows its equal on the entire icy continent. It constantly hunts different seals and penguins, and in the water it eats fish and krill. It'd be all right, but the leopard seal is dangerous even for people. Polar explorers and ordinary tourists should be very careful when in a boat or standing at the edge of an ice floe. At any second, a leopard seal can jump out of the water, catch a person, and drag them to a great depth. Unfortunately, this happened before. In 2003, scientist Kirsty Brown became a victim of a leopard seal when the predator grabbed her, dragged her to a depth of 230 feet, and held her with its teeth until she drowned. Southern Elephant Seal Meet the largest seal in the world. The southern elephant seal got its name from the very large size of the fat body and the skin sac on the male's nose, which swells up into a large ball during restlessness or mating season. However, unlike common herbivorous elephants, this elephant is predatory. These hunters reach almost 20 feet in length and weigh about 4 tons. Even the formidable leopard seal seems tiny compared to them. On the face of it, southern elephant seals look quite cute, just like the rest of the seals. But not to be deceived, these creatures congregate in large colonies and hold large territories. They don't like strangers and can even attack humans on occasion. Needless to say about animals, these formidable seals deal shortly with them. Also, they often arrange fights with each other. Usually it's males fighting for females. In Antarctica, they feel very confident because they have only two enemies, the leopard seal and the killer whale. By the way, they often fight with killer whales right by the shore. Speaking of killer whales, they can also be safely included among the most dangerous animals of Antarctica, at least because killer whales also live in southern waters. Orcas, as they're also known, are one of the most dangerous sea creatures in general. They're perfect predators. Orcas grow up to 33 feet in length and weigh 8 tons. They boast massive and sharp teeth up to 5 inches long, with which they easily tear even large prey. In addition, orcas are very intelligent creatures that gather in pods and hunt using advanced tactical methods. For example, they ram large sharks straight into the side, hurting them and then eating their energy-rich liver. Large whales are surrounded and exhausted by orcas, and then they divide up the huge prey. They also throw seals off the ice, making waves that wash the poor creatures straight to the killer whales. Orcas can be called cruel creatures. Unlike many other predators that kill their prey instantly and immediately proceed to their meal, these creatures may first mock the prey. For example, they like to throw seals high in the air, so they stun them on the water. In addition, they can swim right up to the shore grab the prey and start beating it on the shallow water or in the sand in front of the prey's relatives. One good thing is orcas are safe for humans. In the wild, they never attack people. Moreover, you can even swim with these killers. This doesn't always work with sperm whales, the next inhabitants of Antarctic waters. In general, sperm whales, like other whales, do not attack humans and can even swim with them. However, an injured sperm whale is extremely dangerous. 
Angry sperm whales can pounce on divers, sink boats and ships, and even kill sailors. But still, the sperm whale poses the greatest danger to animals. Like all toothed whales, it's a predator and it's very large. Sperm whales reach about 65 feet in length and weigh up to 40 tons. The basis of diet is fish and mollusks, but sometimes the sperm whale has to engage in battle with orcas. Orcas usually attack sperm whales' babies and, in this case, a pod of sperm whales take all-round defense. They surround the baby and don't let the killer whale get to it. As a rule, this defensive tactic works. Sperm whales have another enemy and source of food, the giant squid, one of the world's creepiest creatures which can easily be found in deep Antarctic waters. Let's talk about it, too. The giant squid is a real monster. It's believed that it was the prototype of the kraken, the legendary creature. This isn't surprising, because in ancient times when sailors saw the 66-foot mollusk with eyes the size of a plate and creepy tentacles, they were really scared. In fact, the giant squid is not dangerous to humans. First, it lives too deep and rarely appears on the surface, and secondly, it's not an active predator. The huge mollusk usually hangs in the water column and waits for passing preys. As a rule, these are anchovies as well as other squids and zooplankton. But sometimes the giant squid has to fight back. The main enemy of the giant squid is the sperm whale. This toothed whale can dive to a depth of several kilometers so that huge mollusks cannot hide from it. The giant squid also has to deal with other dangerous predators in Antarctica, including orcas and southern elephant seals. Weddell Seal it must be said that the fauna of Antarctica is quite sparse. There are not really many dangerous creatures. To some extent, the Weddell seal, the most famous seal of the South Pole, can also be called dangerous. However, it's dangerous only to small sea creatures. These beauties are also predators. However, unlike leopard seals or southern elephant seals, they're not dangerous to humans. But Antarctic fish, crustaceans, and cephalopods should stay away from these toothy, chubby creatures as they hunt on them and you can hardly hide from the Webel seal at a depth, these predators go down to 2,600 feet under the water where they grab their prey. By the way, these creatures are interesting because they make holes in the thick Antarctic ice, kind of ice holes, through which the seal can surface and breathe air. Weddell seals create these holes with their sharp fangs, literally gnawing their way to fresh air. They scrape out new ice as it freezes. They have to do it often, so old seals usually have broken incisors and fangs. Animals are only one of the few things that can be said about Antarctica. The amazing continent is interesting in other ways as well. For example, research and discoveries are often made here. In recent months, scientists have made several important discoveries, so I suggest you find out about them. Lake The most famous and largest subglacial lake in Antarctica is Lake Vostok. Its discovery was a real sensation. But recently, scientists discovered another interesting subglacial lake, which they called Snow Eagle. They found it under a layer of ice on Princess Elizabeth Land in eastern Antarctica. The lake's about 26 miles long, and its square is 143 square miles. Thus, it's one of the largest subglacial lakes in all of Antarctica. Researchers believe it may contain information about how the East Antarctic ice sheet formed. Studying the lake could shed light on many of the processes involved in Antarctica and its formation. Fish Colony At the beginning of this year, scientists discovered the world's largest breeding colony of fish in Antarctica. It was found by a German expedition in the Weddell Sea. Yes, that's not just the name of the seals. The colony included tens of millions of nests and covers an area of 92.6 square miles. This is slightly less than the area of the Maldives. As it turned out, the nests contain ice fish. They're unique creatures with transparent blood and the only vertebrates that don't have red blood cells. To survive the low temperatures, the fish had developed an antifreeze protein in their colorless blood that counteracts the formation of ice crystals. The scientists' discovery was unique. They hadn't seen an ecosystem like this anywhere else. Most likely, the study of the colony will allow researchers to better understand how life behaves in extreme conditions. But all these discoveries may be meaningless, because a few months ago, scientists concluded that Antarctica is rapidly disappearing. The continent is actively melting, literally before our eyes. Scientists blame the warm winds blowing this year, as well as general warming. 
things continue at such a pace, in a few decades there may be nothing left of Antarctica. In that case, the level of the world ocean will rise dramatically and many human settlements will be underwater. But so far this is just a hypothesis. It's also possible that everything will be fine with Antarctica. Pelican Eel The pelican eel belongs to the Sacopharyngiforms. It's also called the gulper eel or the pelican gulper. As you may have already noticed, the fish got its name because of its huge jaw and leathery sac on the lower part of its mouth, which helps it catch prey like a pelican does. The pelican eel has a mouth volume of up to 6.1 cubic inches, which is 11 times its body volume. Pelican eels inhabit the temperate and tropical belts of all oceans at great depths of 1,600 to almost 10,000 feet, and that's why they're poorly studied. Basically, the features can be judged from individual specimens accidentally caught in fishing nets. Pelican eels feed on crustaceans, fish, and squid. Although the enormous jaw and sack of pelican eels allows them to swallow prey several times larger than themselves, no prey longer than four inches was found in their stomachs. This means that the nutrition process of the pelican eel is not arranged like that of a pelican, but rather like that of a whale. Together with a small prey, it swallows the huge amount of water, which it then gradually gets rid of. Interestingly, the skin of the pelican eel is completely black and invisible not only to its prey but also to predators. Astronistes Lucifer It's hard to disagree that one name for the sea creatures in this episode is fancier than another. This fish is named Astronistes Lucifer in honor of its large fangs across its jaw. It lives in the deepest depths of the ocean and is able to glow. Its main habitat is the waters between Australia and New Zealand. The fish has a glowing spur on its chin that attracts other fish. For this, Astronistes lucifer can be called a fish fisherman because it fishes using its offshoot and then eats the fish. At this point, the creature has not been researched enough and there is very little information about Astronistes lucifer. Nevertheless, its creepy appearance is enough to make one not want to encounter it. Sea Spider Arachnophobes, if you decide to escape from the spiders chasing you on land directly into the water, I'll disappoint you. They exist even in the deepest and darkest place of the ocean. However, despite their outward resemblances, sea spiders are hardly related to terrestrial spiders. They're not even spiders, but a class of marine arthropods. They inhabit the seas, especially the Mediterranean and Caribbean, as well as the Arctic and Southern Oceans. Currently, science knows more than 1,000 species of sea spiders, which also includes several species at the bottom of the Mariana Trench, the deepest point on the planet. Usually, individuals are from 0.03 to just 0.3 inches in size, but some species grow all the way up to 35 inches in length. Viperfish The viperfish is one of the rarest deep-sea predators. Because of its hard-to-reach habitat and lifestyle, scientists have been unable to determine the exact numbers of the species. It's believed that the viperfish can live in deep water for 30 to 40 years. In captivity, it has a much shorter lifespan, only a few hours. Interestingly, the viperfish varies in color. So far, scientists have found green, silver, and blackfish. The distinctive feature of this animal is its massive, fang-like teeth, which it uses to catch its prey. They're so large that they actually extend beyond the mouth and are always visible. The viperfish hunts dragonfish and other small creatures that live at the bottom of the Mariana Trench and in other deep parts of the ocean. By the way, this animal is able to undergo long periods of starvation with complete absence of food. Crown Jellyfish What does this bizarre-looking sea creature remind you of? It looks pretty much like a UFO to me. In fact, it's the crown jellyfish, and like most other jellyfish, it has no digestive, respiratory, circulatory, or central nervous system. It lives at depths of 3,280 to 13,000 feet where no sunlight penetrates. When the animal is frightened, it turns on bioluminescent blue lights, which spin like blinkers on a police car. It looks spectacular and unusual. That's all, guys. Who else do you think might be lurking in the depths of the ocean? Share your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching, and see you later.